The evolution of vaping has been quite a journey. From the start, you had a very distinct line between a very high-end expensive device and your run-of-the-mill starter kit. Since then, the line has been blurred with high-end devices pretty much dying off and companies focusing their attention on making high-quality affordable devices. The Vapor Flask was by no means an ultra-high-end device, but what it did offer was a timeless design that was just different from the crowd. And today, we're going to be talking about why after seven years, this is still one of my favorite devices. Devices. This is Retro Reviews. Hey, how's it going everyone? Dave here from Dash Vapes and welcome back to another episode of Retro Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at the history of Vapor Flask and how they gained their popularity or lack thereof. Now, just as a disclaimer before we start this video, uh, I am a huge fan of Vapor Flask. I owned almost all of them, but we'll touch on that more throughout the video. But before we jump into it, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and hit the little bell to stay up to date with our latest videos. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about Vapor Flask. Initially released back in 2014, the Vapor Flask excited many vapors as most of the market was your typical tube mech mod or boxy regulated mod. The Vapor Flask brought innovation to the table and people raved about it. Initially sporting a DNA30 chipset and an extremely ergonomic design, the device sold like crazy, albeit at a much higher price than your typical mod. And it wasn't long before Vapor Flask released the next iteration to the Vapor Flask lineup, the Vapor Flask V2. The Vapor Flask V2 introduced a user-replaceable battery door similar to what we see in today's box mods, which many users were asking for. Before the V2 Vapor Flask, users had to charge up the Sony VTC battery cells via the USB port on the back. Needless to say, the removable batteries on the bottom were a much welcomed addition. Not long after the release of the Vapor Flask V2, the Vapor Flask V2.1 was released, which is the one I have here. The V2.1 was pretty much identical to the V2, but swapped out the DNA30 chip for the newer DNA40 chipset. The V2.1 would be one of the longest runs for Vapor Flask, and it was very easy to see why. When you first pick up one of the original Vapor Flasks, you instantly appreciate just how well they are built. It's probably one of the most solid devices I've ever held, it just all almost feels like one piece. Holding the device was a joy due to the curved design which contours to your hand and your finger falls right on the power button. However, these perks came at a price. When we initially stocked the Vapor Flask V2.1, it sold for a whopping $229.99 Canadian, which sounds astronomically high, especially by today's standards, but it sold. Now, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love my Vapor Flask V2.1, but it doesn't come without its downfalls. First of all, the 40 watt output is definitely not high, especially when we have 150, 200 watt devices out right now. Also, the battery slot at the bottom was incredibly annoying, with some batteries actually getting stuck in devices if the wraps were too big. Also, due to the curved design, only 22 millimeter atomizers would fit or else you would run into overhang issues. However, personally, all of those issues were overshadowed by just the sheer quality of this device. Not long after the release of the V2.1, Vapor Flask teamed up with Vapor Shark to create the Vapor Shark Vapor Flask. This was essentially just a regular Vapor Flask V2.1 with a bigger screen and Vapor Shark's signature rubberized finish. However, the quality control of these devices were quite hit or miss. Sales for the Vapor Flask started dropping with the introduction of sub ohm tanks and higher wattage vaping. The industry took an immediate shift towards cloud chasing, which the peppy little DNA40 chip just couldn't keep up with. Vapor Flask then spent a year designing their next device and they focused on more power. To maintain the reliable quality of the chipset, Vapor Flask teamed up with high end Chinese chipset manufacturer Yihi and created the SX Vapor Flask. Sporting the SX350J chipset, also found in the SX Mini M class, the device could output a much improved 100 watts, but the response was kind of... Compared to one of the original Vapor Flasks, like the one I have here, the SX Mini version just felt cheaper. It was lighter, thinner material, and there were also a handful of reliability issues with it. And I actually had one myself, but the keyword there is had. What ended up happening is that a wire actually came loose within the device, which rendered the device useless. Do I miss it? Absolutely, but I definitely prefer this V2.1 over it. The SX Vapor Flask had a pretty short run with seldom success. This is probably due to the influx of much more affordable mods with higher power outputs like the Segeli 150. Simply put, people were just no longer down to spend 200 plus dollars on a device, let alone for one with less power. 
Devices started getting smaller, more powerful, and cheaper, and it was this shift in the industry that was essentially the nail in the coffin for Vapor Flask. In 2016, Vapor Flask sold the rights to the name and a Chinese company started a new company called Vape Forward. Utilizing the same initials as Vapor Flask, they teamed up with Wismec to create a new line of affordable Vapor Flasks for the average market. The Vapor Flask Stout was a single 26650 device, the Light was a single 18650 device, but everyone's attention was on the Vapor Flask Classic. This device borrowed the same design as the original Vapor Flasks, albeit with a few new additions. First of all, the bottom battery screw doors were swapped out with a removable battery plate and the screw was moved from the top of the device to the side. And I also had a Vapor Flask Classic, however it died on me rather quickly as I'm pretty sure the chipset got fried. Other than the design, this shared no DNA with the original Vapor Flask, it was just a hollow, cheaply made shell of what once was a revolutionary device. The device creaked when you held it, the battery door was loose, overall it was just cheap. The Vape Forward Vapor Flasks were the last Vapor Flasks to ever hit the market. And coming from an avid Vapor Flask fan, they will be missed. Now if somehow the people behind Vapor Flask are watching this, please come out with a new one. I actually think with how the industry is now in terms of device designs, a new and improved Vapor Flask would do quite well. But yeah, if anyone is watching from Vapor Flask, please make a new one and I will endorse the hell out of it. Now, here's where I wanna hear from you lovely viewers out there. What are your thoughts on the Vapor Flask and would you be interested in a device design similar to this? Let me know by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And that pretty much wraps up today's episode of Retro Reviews. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to hit that like button down below and hit subscribe to stay up to date with our latest videos. As always, I'm Dave from Dash Vapes and I'll see you in the next video.